Good morning to one and all. This is Dr. Nabil Ahmed with you, and today's topic we're going to be discussing is on filing requirements in Singapore regarding the estimated chargeable income, the AG and requirements, and taxation filings for companies. So, going through certain legends, which is going to be importantly used in our presentation, ACRA, which is the Accounting and Corporate Regulation Authority of Singapore, AGM Annual General Meeting, AR is Annual Return, ECI Estimated Chargeable Income. EOT extension of time, FYES financial year, FYE financial year end, IRAS Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore, and YA year of assessment. And these are going to be quite frequently used in the rest of the presentation today. So, just looking at the presentation schema, we're going to be dividing the presentation into two parts, where first we'll be discussing about the requirements for filing from the income tax perspective, which is the IRAS, Income Tax Regulatory Authority of Singapore. And then we move on to ACRA, Accounting, Corporating, and Regulatory Authorities filing requirements. So, it's going to be divided into two broad categories. So, coming back once again to just define our uh, two important slabs for the day ACRA. ACRA, Accounting and Corporate Regulatory Authority of Singapore, is a government body that oversees and enforces companies' regulation in Singapore. And as per the Singapore's Companies Act, it requires to hold AGM and file an annual return with ACRA within the specified time limits. And ACRA's body has been developed in such a way that everything can be done online through the BIS file using the SING pass, which is the login details of the company secretary or the local director. Same with IRAS, Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore, where the income tax can be filed online and all Singapore companies are required to pay taxes and file annual return within IRAs within a stipulated period of time. So you're going to go into get into the details and understand the different requirements from ACRA's perspective and IRAs perspective. So we'll start with IRAs, Inland Revenue Authority of Singapore Department's different requirements for uh, filing income taxes in Singapore. So annual tax returns with IRAs, as all Singapore companies are required to file annual income tax returns with IRAs, and these returns include two types. One is what we call as the ECI, estimated chargeable income, that must be filled within three months of the company's financial year end getting over. Unlike in other countries, in Singapore, companies can have their own financial year end depending on their ease of operation. Company's year end could be March, could be July, could be December, it could also be November, depending on the company's formation date and company's ease of operation. So it is mandated that as per the income tax rules, from three months from the end of the financial year, the estimated chargeable income have to be filed. So we'll have a separate presentation on what is the estimated chargeable income forms and how do we prepare it. As of now, we'll stick to ECI being the companies declaring what is your estimated chargeable income for the financial year within three years, three months from the date of the end of the financial year has to be filed with IRAs. After that is done, the company will have to file for a corporate income tax return that must be filed by November 30 for e-paper filing and by 15 December for e-filing. And this has to be done in the assessment year, the 30th number, which falls due after the end of the financial year is concerned for any companies. So coming back to estimated chargeable income is an estimate of the company's taxable income for the latest financial year that just ended after deducting all the tax allowable expenditure and IRS requires companies to file ECI within three months after the financial year and as we discussed and companies will receive a reminder from IRS to file the ECI in the last month of the financial year. So from that date within three months the companies will have to file it. There, are a, there is a waiver for companies whose annual revenue is not more than $5 million in Singapore terms and also their ECI for the year of assessment is going to be nil. So if both these conditions are going to be satisfied for the company, they are waived from filing the ECI. So let us say we have completed the financial year end 2019, say December 2019. So in the year ended December 2019, the company has not had an annual revenue of more than $5 million. And the company also understands that in the year of assessment, which is going to be the year ended 2020, they're also not going to have any ECI and the ECI is going to be nil. So in these two conditions are satisfied, the companies can very comfortably go and apply for waiver of ECI and they don't need to be filing the ECI. But coming back to the corporate income tax return, it is mandatory to file the corporate income tax return in addition to the ECI filing. And there are two types of forms which can be used, which is the form C and form CS, which has a later date as well as an ease of preparation. So we'll come back to that in the next few slides. 
So the form C or CS is a declaration form from the companies to declare their actual income. And companies must ensure that the form is correctly completed and gives a full and true account of the company's income. So it should be a holistic number and it should be based on the actuals. And it has to be filed if it's an e-filing by 15th of December, where you have a slightly extended deadline by 15 days. But it's a paper-based filing where you manually take the paper and go to IRAS office and file it. It should be done by 30th of November for any assessment year. So coming to Form C and CS, Company needs to file the corporate income tax return with Form C and attach the computation, financial statements, the detailed profit and loss account, and other supporting documents to substantiate that the income that they have mentioned is true and fair. And companies file Form CS is a simplified version of the corporate income tax return form that does not require companies to attach the computations and financial statements. But to be using a Form CS form, the company must meet these following regulations. So Form C is a generalized form which applies to all companies. But those companies who also meet the following regulation that's to be discussed, they can go in for Form CS. The company must be incorporated in Singapore. The company must not have more than 5 million in annual revenue. The company is not claiming any of the group relief, carry back of current year capital allowances or losses, investment allowance or foreign tax credit at and deductible tax at source. So if the company is not enjoying any of these claims, then the company can just go ahead and file the form CS. So just to summarize our discussion in IRAS filings, every company, there are two types of filing which will have to be done every year. One is what we call as an ECI, the estimated chargeable income. The second one is the corporate income tax return which they file with IRAS at the end of the financial year before during the assessment year for the assessment of the company's income. And in the uh, corporate income tax return, there are two types of forms which can be used. One is the form C and the other one is the form CS. Form C includes entire calculations, financial statements, and an attachment for detailed profit and loss account, as well as any of the supporting documents that deems fit. However, form CS gives few uh, relief in terms of applying because it has a summarized version and not a very detailed version. For that, the company should have been incorporated in Singapore, should not have more than 5 million annual revenue, and should not be claiming any of the allowances or benefits under the Income Tax Act. So now we move on to the regulations by the ACRA, which is the Accounting and Corporate Regulatory Authority. And let's understand what it mentions with terms of filing requirements. So we are going to discuss about the annual returns, which the company will have to file, as well as the AGM, which has to be held. So annual returns are filed with ACRA, and all Singapore incorporated companies are required to file the annual returns with ACRA to ensure that the company's information on the ACRA's register is up to date. So in the annual return, just not the business activities for the year, but also the particulars of the shareholders and directors are also updated every year to ensure that the information which is registered and lodged with ACRA is up to date. So let us understand that there's a passport number change or the change of citizenship by a director or a citizen secretary, or it be a shareholder, Every information has to be up to date and there's a penalty for late filing. The annual return is electronically form lodged with ACRA. So it does not, it's come out of the manual filing and there's a BIS file which uh, helps to upload documents and do an e-filing. And this is logged in through the company secretaries or the local director's sync pass account, which helps you to log into the governmental portal. It contains important particulars of the company, such as the name of the director, secretary, members and the date to which the financial statements of the company are made up to date and the annual return provides critical information that help the company stakeholder to make informed decisions and the appointed officer of a company like the secretary or director can file the annual return of ACRA online through the filing portal PIS file. The information in detail that has been lodged with ACRA with the annual return on a yearly basis. First is the company type the registered office address, particulars of the company's offices, and details of the registered charges have to be up to date. In terms of shares, the number of shares held, issued capital, amount of paid up share capital is mentioned. Regarding the financial statement, if exempted from financing, filing a financial statement, a declaration to that has to be filed. And if a financial is updated, it has to be filed in the XBRL format. It has to be prepared and validated before the AR filing and confirmation whether there are any changes to the company's primary and secondary data. If there has been, that has to be updated. If there's change in company names, former name has to be kept in mind and has to be applied and has to be uh, mentioned in the annual return as well. So date of the AGM, uh, 
this company's meeting if it was held and not applicable if the company is exempted from holding an AGM or has dispensed with AGM. If the company has only one director, only this director is required to sign off on the document submitted with the annual return. But if the company has more than one director, at least two directors may sign off on the documents with the annual return that has to be filed. So now we uh, look at some of the tax filing dates and the importance. Uh, annual return filing for listed companies will have to be filed within five months after the financial year end and for non-listed companies within seven months after the financial year end. But for companies having share capital and keeping a branch register outside Singapore, listed companies within six months after the financial year end and for non-listed companies within eight months after the financial year end has to be filed and this has to be complied with. An AR can be filed only after an AGM has been held, after the financial statement are sent to the members if company need not hold AGM, and after the financial year end is completed and for a private dormant relevant company that is exempted from preparing financial statements or that is dispensed with the AGM. Overdue return also has to be filed if a company has not filed its annual return for more than one year of the financial year, Overdue AR needs to be filed before proceeding to the filing of AR for the latest financial year. So previous backlogs have to be completed and this decreases the ratings of the companies in Accra and it's very important for companies to maintain their ratings with Accra. There are some exemptions for companies. Uh, extension of time to file the AR. Companies can apply for an exemption, which we call as EOT, of 60 days to file the AR. So if they want to get this extension for 60 days, they will have to apply for the EOT at least 14 days prior to the completion of the deadline, which is the last three months that we had after the financial year end. So as it requires 14 days to process, company needs the EOT application before 14 days and the cost of the application is $200. So either a company's officer or a professional secretarial firm can be representing the company and may apply for an EOT. First is to log into the BIS file. And under that, you have file e-service selecting the local company. Under annual filing, there is extension of time for AGM and annual return. The company will have to provide reasons for the application. Public listed companies must attach any supportings and then ensure that the transaction is completed following a payment of $200. An acknowledgement page will be shown up on successful completion. And then, yes, the file is lodged and you have an extension taken care of for the filing, the annual return in the Akras portal. So AGM is a mandatory annual meeting of shareholders. And at the AGM, a company presents its financial statement before shareholders. And an AGM is therefore a very, very important opportunity to address members' concern. And it is important that the AGM for listed companies is held not later than four years from the financial year end. And for non-listed companies, six months after the financial year end is completed. So all uh, delays and extension attracts penalties. So companies and directors that breach statutory regulation and obligation may be offered an opportunity to pay a composition sum of 300 per breach instead of facing prosecution. But if the composition fund also has not been complied with, then it goes for uh, disqualification of an audit uh, director, which will see that. So type of breach, the first is the AGM is held late. So you have a composition penalty, which is imposed against the company and not towards the director. And the composition fund is of $300. And if AR is lodged late, the late lodgement fees is also $300 that the company will have to make a payment. Companies or the directors can be prosecuted if they do not accept to pay the offer of composition or when the composition is not offered at all. If convicted, there can be a fine of maximum $500 per charge on the local director. Disqualification of a director, of a director who is convicted of more than three filing related offenses within a period of five years, which will lead to the disqualification of the director. And he cannot be appointed as a director for the next five years in any company. And if Accra has reasons to believe that the company is not carrying on the business as it's intended or such of non-filing of AR for consecutive years, Accra will disqualify the director uh, for five years and also strike off the company from the Accra portal. So the company will become uh, inexistent. So they liquidated the company by force of uh, Accra. So that's, that's a more serious offense to get into. So in the next few weeks presentation, I will be going in depth detail of the format of the ECI, the type of lodgement of IRAS 
and the type of lodgement for annual return in the ACRAS website. So we'll be going more into the technicality of understanding how the filing has been done. I would like to share the credits and acknowledgement with Rimal for this wonderful presentation. And thank you so much for hearings out and, and looking forward to meet you in yet another interesting presentation next week. Thank you and have a nice day.